There are great academic discussions today about the causes of evil. You will hear people discuss all the reasons why evil exists and of course how it needs to be addressed. There have been many myths that have been established over history about where evil came from and why evil exists. Probably one of the most well-known Greek myths about the origin of evil is Pandora's box. Zeus, as the myth goes, was offended by two brothers, the god Zeus in Greek mythology, was offended by two brothers. And in reaction to how they had offended the gods, he created a woman, the myth says, a very beautiful, beautiful woman. He took clay and made this lovely lady, and one of the two brothers that had offended Zeus married the lady. Zeus then created this spectacular box as a wedding present for Pandora, the lady, and her new husband, one of the brothers who had offended him. There was only one instruction given to Pandora, you are not to open this box. You can enjoy it, you can look at it, you can admire it, but under no circumstances do you take this key and open the box. Well, as the myth goes, Pandora is passing this box every day, and she is dying to know what's in it. It's interesting that Zeus gave her a box and gave her a key and told her don't use it. But after she couldn't take it anymore, she took the key, she opened the box, thus Pandora's box, and out of the box, as the myth goes, all manner of evil emerged. Death, disease, destruction, illness, murder, envy, all manner of evil just erupted out of the box. And when all of this evil came out, she just collapsed and wept because she had opened up a door for evil to enter the world. She closed the box. Her husband came in and saw her weeping because she had let loose evil in the world. Well, that's a myth. It's a Greek myth. There is no Zeus. There were no two brothers before the first woman. But one thing is consistent, and that is that a human being unleashed something. That expanded to the world. There is a cloud cover that covers the human race. A cloud cover of destruction. We, we look at it and we say, how could he do that, she do that, or I do that? Because there's this covering. And God said, as we've studied, in chapter 2, verse 17, Every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but the tree in the midst of the garden, do not eat it or you're going to die. You're going to die. So the cloud cover that covers the human race can be summed up in one word, and that is the word death. That's the cloud cover. It, 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 no matter what you try to do with it, it just covers stuff. It just keeps coming up. And he says, you shall surely die. But as we've already explained, the word death in the Bible means separation. So forget the word death for a moment and just think of the word separation. When a physical body dies, the soul leaves. The soul is separated from the body. So the body can no longer function because the life has been separated. Thus, death. So... Any 
illegitimate separation equals death. Okay, remember that now for where we're going. Any illegitimate separation is the definition biblically of death. Death does not mean something ends. It means something has separated. So God says, on the day you eat of this fruit, there will be a separation that will occur and you will die. Our purpose today is for you to understand the categories of death. Because I can assure you that most here today, if not all, have died, are dying, or will soon be dead because of the definition of death. The Bible says over and over again that sin and death go together. The two cannot be separated. Ezekiel 18, 4, the soul that sinneth shall die. Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death. James 1, 15, sin results in death. So the two are always put together. You cannot sin and not die. Every time there is a sin, at that moment, there is a death. But we're defining death, as the Bible defines it, that a separation occurs. Now with that in mind, let's see what happened to Adam and Eve when they sinned against God and what happens to us when we do likewise. Now I know some are already saying, well, you know, I came here to be lifted up. I gave the church to be lifted up. Verse 7 of Genesis chapter 3. They have eaten of the fruit under the tutelage of Satan. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they knew that they were naked. They sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loin coverings. They heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees in the garden. He said, on the day you eat, you will die. They did, but not physically. They didn't die for hundreds of years, physically. What happened that day was they died spiritually because a separation occurred between them and God. So the first kind of death is spiritual death, where your relationship with God is broken. It says, when they ate, their eyes were opened. Oh, wait a minute, they could already see. All the trees of the garden, you may freely eat. They can see the trees. They can see the fruit on the trees that they can eat from. They were not physically blind. What does he mean on the day they ate, their eyes would be open? Their conscience would for the first time be exposed to evil. They would become, let's change the word, aware of something they were never aware of before. And that is the consequence of evil. They had not known evil till this point. They had only known good because everything God made was good. But once they obeyed, the conscience, which is God's regulatory system of the soul, became aware of something it was never supposed to become aware of. And I bet you all of us have had experiences in our lives where we look back and say, I wish I didn't know that. Because now that I know it, it has messed me up. That's why we, just, we try to protect our children from seeing certain things or being exposed to certain things so that they don't become aware of the evil for as long as we can. God says, I don't want you to eat because I don't want you to become aware. I do not want you to become a decipherer of good and evil. So if you stick with me, your conscience will be protected from illegitimate exposure. 
because they disobey God, they were exposed to something. And now, watch this, they are hiding from God. It says that when they got exposed to evil, it affected their relationship with God and they sowed fig leaves around themselves to cover themselves because what was supposed to be natural now became immodest. That's why when you wear clothes, people describe you as modest or immodest because the exposure is now viewed as something inappropriate. And so they are now exposed and they don't want God to see. They don't want God to see their exposure. And so they do what we all do when we're exposed, we cover up. It says they've hid behind the trees. Oh, wait a minute now. Those are good trees. All the trees are good because everything God made was good. They sewed their loincloths with leaves from the trees. So they not only hide from God, they hide from God in his blessings. They use the goodness of God as their hiding place. How many folk here this morning are hiding in church? You're in the place that God created, but you hid and you got your good looking lawn cloths on. He's hiding in the place of blessing. So God has to come looking for them because they have run from God. Spiritual death is where there is an illegitimate separation from fellowship with the living God. And sin produces an illegitimate, something God does not want, separation from God. And the Bible says this separation has affected and infected the whole human race. Ephesians chapter 2, you are dead in your trespasses and in your sins. Talking about spiritual death. That this unsaved world walks around spiritually disconnected from God. And the worst part about it is they don't even know it. You know why? Because they were in thick leaves. Fig leaves of religion, fig leaves of trying to be a nice person, fig leaves of popularity, fig leaves, they, they want to look like it's okay while they hide. Hide behind using the name God, hide behind being religious, they hide, they hide. But, but there's a spiritual disconnect because of disobedience to the revealed will of God. We've all felt the sting of that. That's why 1 John 1 talks about our fellowship with God when we sin because if, if the fellowship is broken, he, he goes so far and says in 1 John 1, and if you say you haven't sinned, when I know you've sinned, just let me tell you, you and I are not on the same page. So unfortunately, even many of God's children are walking around disconnected from the true and living God because we're hiding. And so there is this spiritual separation. Notice their lawn cloths are made of leaves. The leaves are on the trees. So they got to break the leaves off the trees in order to make the lawn cloths because what was supposed to be fine is no longer fine anymore in light of their disobedience. In other words, they, they patch together a solution. Let's, let's, let's do a little patchwork. Because if we can patch it up good enough, we can be covered. Only problem is an omniscient God knows. So God, they heard the sound of the Lord God, verse 9, walking in the garden. So that's probably Jesus Christ, the second member of the Trinity, walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Look at it. The weather's nice. The trees are nice. They hear the rustling 
of the Lord God and the God of